With the U.S. mission in Afghanistan over after nearly 20 years, the Biden White House says it will shift its focus to other threats and adversaries around the world. One of those adversaries is China. But despite the powerful Chinese government having little in common with a Taliban rule in its infancy, the two sides are finding some common ground. Joining us now, NBC News foreign correspondent Janice Mackey-Frayer, live in Beijing. Janice, what more can you tell us about this? Well, publicly, we've seen China gloating uh, about the U.S. withdrawal and how messy it was. But privately, officials here are more circumspect. Certainly, they were never happy about having a large U.S. military presence on the other side of its border locked in a war. But China did arguably enjoy the benefit of having the U.S. and NATO forces shouldering the security burden in the region for the last 20 years. So now China has opportunities to flex its soft power muscles, to make massive investments in infrastructure, but it is also facing serious risks. China is fearful of attacks inside the country. It's that threat that they've used as justification time and again for its policies with Uyghurs and other minorities in Xinjiang. But security is what's driving China's relationship with the Taliban and what they're now calling friendly relations. There was a Taliban delegation that came here in July. They gave security assurances. They're now declaring China as their most important partner. These are all moves that the U.S. is going to be watching very closely. Now, I sat down with Joel Bull. He's a retired senior colonel in China's PLA, the People's Liberation Army. And it's rare that we get to hear from a military insider. He recently wrote an opinion piece for the New York Times that talked about China's golden opportunity, which is mainly to capitalize on what's widely seen as the failure of U.S. policy. How does China feel about the outcome in Afghanistan? Is it happy that, well, that the U.S. has pulled out and, and in a messy way? What are China's advantages? First is political impartiality. The second is huge economic opportunities for Afghans. When I talk about the first point, uh, let me remind you that uh, Afghans do not have bad memories of China being invaders, because China has never invaded Afghanistan. So when China talk about the things it would want to do, or if China talk about this issue in your Security Council, uh, China's points are, are worthwhile. Afghan is a war-torn country. There are bad roads, there are poor houses, there is no industry. And China, besides, is one of its direct neighbors. So with the American troops withdrawing, the major concern for Chinese companies about security is gone. So these are huge opportunities. Are the optics not strange that China is fighting extremism at home, yet embracing an extremist group next door? No, it depends on how you define uh, Taliban uh, government. The fact is, the Afghan uh, Taliban has taken over the whole country, and they have promised uh, to make uh, changes in the right directions. So why don't we give them a chance? Why would we, we insist they are terrorist uh, groups? And who actually uh, did the biggest damage in Afghanistan? It's American-led war. It's NATO forces. China has yet to recognize the Taliban government as the legitimate government of Afghanistan. Uh, but to an extent, it's already doing the Taliban's diplomatic legwork, uh, speaking on behalf of the group, asking the world to give it a chance. Uh, the Taliban is counting on Chinese investment and Chinese funding, uh, given the fact that most of its foreign aid is going to dry up. So what we could see going forward is actually the beginning of a very pragmatic partnership if Kabul does deliver on those security assurances that they've given to Beijing. You know, Janice, uh, I, I've heard for some time, uh, and I'm, I'm sure you have as well, from diplomats and, uh, and leaders of other countries that when the United States comes in to help a country, uh, they talk about human rights and they lecture them on how, you know, ask questions, how are you going to treat uh, certain religious minorities, how are you going to treat women and girls? And these diplomats say when the Chinese come in, they just say, what do you need? How much do you want? Here's the check. 
uh, nothing attached to it. Is that the sort of relationship we expect to be uh, could possibly be set up here between China and Afghanistan? Well, Chinese officials are known for their transactional diplomacy. Uh, and what is likely going to happen in Afghanistan is that there are going to be these massive investments in infrastructure. China sees the opportunity to finish that missing piece of the puzzle in the Belt and Road Initiative that will connect Central Asia to the Middle East. Uh, so they do see the opportunity. Uh, and it's worth for them to, to take a gamble on the Taliban. And, and you're right, those the, the funding is going to come with very few questions asked about human rights, about democracy. Uh, so in that sense, there are some who believe that the Taliban and China uh, actually make a fairly good partnership. Um, but that doesn't mean that China is uh, wading in too far. They, they realize that uh, caution needs to be taken, that there are security risks. Uh, they have Pakistan on side that uh, is going to continue to be a conduit to the Taliban. But again, publicly, officials are saying that uh, the Taliban's deeds need to match their words, and they need to deliver on those security assurances. NBC's Janice Mackie Freyer in Beijing, thank you very much. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.